Hi, it's Jan Beta, and this is part two of my adventures uh, recreating my Christmas 1987 Commodore 64 setup. You may have seen uh, the last episode of this where I cleaned this up and restored it to its original glory, the Aldi Commodore 64. If you haven't seen it, you can click in the corner there and uh, are right there. And today, the second part, I want to see if I can refurbish this. And it is a 1541 floppy drive. In fact, it is the original 1541 floppy disk drive I had as a kid that you can see in the Christmas picture. Um, it has Dolphin DOS built in, which uh, I didn't have in the computer. Dolphin DOS is a parallel port uh, floppy speeder uh, that's pretty effective. I think it's uh, 14 times as fast as um, the original uh, loading and saving in this. And it is pretty effective. The problem is you need a, a special Dolphin DOS ROM in the computer as well. There's a special ROM and some circuitry in here as we're gonna see in a minute. And you also need the ROM and the computer for it to work. I didn't have that because I had the Aldi Commodore 64 and uh, the ROMs weren't socketed in there. So my father uh, basically didn't solder, mess around with the Commodore 64 back in the day and uh, just gave me this without the ROM and it worked fine uh, as a normal 1541. I made a video for my patrons a while back. Um, if you are not familiar with Patreon, you can click on the link below. There's a Patreon link and uh, I make some very few, to be honest. Uh, I, I want to do more. Uh, some videos that are uh, Patreon exclusive that you only get to see if you, if you um, give me some money on a monthly ba basis um, via... The Patreon platform that is uh, linked in below and I'm also gonna make a link in the corner. So um, check that out, it's a pretty uh, cool system to support uh, creators. I don't I don't call myself a creator really, but uh, people who put out um, content that is interesting to people um, can be rewarded doing so via Patreon. And there are many people out there who are um, pretty allergic to um, advertising on their channels and uh, like me I don't have uh, maybe you didn't know that I don't have any ads running during the videos and stuff because I just I find it horrible so that's a way to support me and to support me not having ads on this channel so thank you if you do maybe consider doing it if you are, if you don't uh, on with this so uh, in fact this worked for me as a kid uh, without Dolphin DOS. I now have Dolphin DOS in every um, Commodore 64. I restorated in my, in my uh, ROM switcher thingy there. And so I can use Dolphin DOS in this, which works just fine. It only has the problem. Usually you can switch uh, between the ROMs here. You have the Dolphin DOS ROM and you have the normal, normal Commodore ROM. Uh, and in the Commodore position, it doesn't work for some reason. So I wanna look into that. And I want to give this uh, some restoration. That's the plan for today. Don't know if you can see it very well on camera, but it is pretty brown uh, compared to the Commodore 64. Look at this. This is the comparison. So um, it should be closer to the Commodore 64 color. Uh, I think I might do some retro brighting on this even. Uh, at the very least, I will, I will clean this case and. Uh, See, and then I'm gonna give it a recapping and uh, the usual stuff I do to Commodore 64s basically applies to the 1541 too. Um, there's a whole computer in here as we're gonna see. Let's open this up. So, and here we are. Um, doesn't look that bad, but dusty. I um, 
cleaned this for a bit before and I was using it. Um, but I want to do a, a recapping of this at the very least. There are quite some uh, capacitors in here. And there are um, the electrolytic ones and there are also some tantalums that I'm going to look into replacing. I don't have any tantalums uh, in stock, but these uh, are pretty common to fail. And I wonder if I could replace them with uh, modern electrolytic parts. It's probably going to be okay. I have to look into that. Um, basically, this is the daughter board for the, the Dolphin Loss thing that has... Uh, the ROM on it and via chip and uh, the processor that's normally in the 1541 itself and it just plugs into the sockets here. Oh, let me put my wrist strap on to be sure not to damage it. Wow, it's pretty uh, tough to get it out. It just plugs in the sockets of the second 65. 22 and the processor this is the whole board and basically um, what I suspect to be broken is uh, the ROM I guess the original ROM which is one of these here and yeah, we're gonna look into that so let's see I think we should put this aside for a moment the whole daughter board thing and uh, see if we can get this running as a, as a normal 1541. So I'm gonna suck out some of the dust there. Okay, that got rid of some of the dust at least. Um, and as you can see, <laughs> Maybe you can't see it. My father used quite the same trick that I used um, in my previous uh, 1541 video. He was working on this and he made um, lines on the connectors so he doesn't uh, get them the wrong side. So let's uh, take out the whole circuit board there and look at it. Whoa, and there's quite some watch wires going on there. That's interesting. This is an early revision, I think. So they had to make some changes there. So I'm gonna give this a little cleaning too. So I think I want to take this whole um, thing out of the plastic case so we can give the case a really good um, uh, cleaning and put it into some soapy water and see if that uh, fixes the color issue. <laughs> so yeah, there are six screws basically to take this whole assembly, the, the drive mechanism and the transformer and stuff out of the case. These are on the sides here. And the LED um, clips in the same as with the Commodore 64 case. I showed that in the uh, previous video. There we go. So the red LED is on the um, drive, obviously. This is just the green. The power LED. I think I want to replace the switch anyway because, uh, yeah. I'm gonna mark where the, the top position is, so the... So it stays in the right uh, direction, if I put it back. Okay, so the case can now go into the bath. <laughs> And I'm literally submerging it into water and a uh, silit bang, which is a, a fat solvent used for mobbing floors, really. This works pretty nicely um, for 
nicotine and star stuff. And so I hope uh, it's gonna make things better. Yeah, the water already gets a bit brown, so I hope it's most of it is uh, nicotine. Now always make sure to not go too hot with the water, because otherwise the plastic might be deforming. So like like a bath, lukewarm water. So I think I give the circuit board a little scrubbing and uh, some IPA, isopropanol alcohol, to clean off the layer of uh, what I think must be nicotine. And I think I'm gonna, yeah, I'm not sure about the tantalum caps, I don't have any of those, because uh, maybe I'll, I'll replace them at a later point. I'm not sure if I can use uh, electrolytics instead, because they have different characteristics, basically, and I don't want uh, the circuit to begin oscillating in some way, and uh, cease to function basically so I'm gonna leave these in there because the drive uh, was working the only thing that I think might be faulty is um, one of the ROMs yeah, I think let's uh, desolder some of the caps here and put in new ones as it turns out I have the um, 4700 microfarad one which is this one and I have I don't have an, an extra one, a six thousand eight hundred one. But this is ridiculously big. Look at this. I think the other one's just sixteen volts or something. Yes. And this is fifty volts. Don't know if I should put that in there. It's it's gonna work, that's not the problem, but um it's not a good brand one. I think I bought this as a test if uh some rather cheap amplifier would work with with these in place got two of them uh, I don't know should I do this I think I'm gonna leave these in place as well and wait for proper replacement ones probably wish I or whoever makes good uh, um, actual caps still so So what I'm also going to do is to reflow some of the connectors here because, or well, reflow these connectors because they are often under a bit of stress and maybe there are some cracks in the solder, solder joints already. So I'm going to add some solder and heat them up a bit. So the other, the tantalum caps I have to replace some other time I guess. But uh, the small electrolytics, which are the ones um, that fail most frequently, uh, I replaced at least. What I'm going to do now is to reseat the ROMs and uh, put some contact cleaner, the stuff I used before, in there in the sockets to see if that fixes our problem with the ROM. So then. Yeah, the board refurbishing uh, is, yeah, it will probably hold up until Christmas, I hope. <laughs> and I'm gonna uh, get into replacing the tantalum caps in another video. Let's see if I can find uh, a 6522 and a 6502. Um, to put in here to check if this works as a normal 1541 at least. I think I have some of those. And as it happens I have this old box of supplies from my father. And in there there's a 6502 processor. 
that is going to go in this position here. So I'm going to clean the socket here. And the other one as well, while I'm at it. And for the other position, I actually have replacement in stock myself. And these are more recent uh, Rockwell parts, actually. So there we go. That's in there, and I hope that maybe this is going to work. I have to clean this table up a bit. And in order to test this, we obviously need uh, some sort of Commodore 64 setup. Uh, so I'm gonna yeah, attach this to the Commodore 64 and see if it works, maybe. So, okay, let's see. Yes, and that looked significantly better. And that's the exact behavior we would uh, want our drive yeah to do so let's see if it does anything uh, really oh yeah and it just it seems to work fine. That's nice. Let's see if, it's, if we can load up uh, Buddha Dash, for example. That's pretty promising. All right, let's see. Yeah, and sure enough, seems to have loaded Boulder Dash. So this is a working drive at the very least. And uh, what we're gonna have to do now is to see if we can get uh, the Dolphin DOS uh, switching going. Okay, so here is how the case turned out. It looks, the top side looks absolutely fine. And for some reason, the bottom half has some really strange, uh, pretty intense yellowing on one side, but only on the one side. The other side is perfectly fine. <laughs> Don't know how that happened. Probably some uh, sun got there and the top half is made of uh, another batch of uh, production run or something like that. I don't really know. But I uh, think I want to put some, some Retrobrite uh, stuff on there for a couple of hours and see how that turns out while I fix the electronics in the drive. So and I took this to the floor because it's quite a messy thing to do. Some cling wrap stuff here. There's just enough left. So this is the side and I'm using a hydrogen peroxide uh, this stuff here 12 percent creamy uh, so yeah that's what i'm using i think think i'm just going to put this in there and put on here and i'm going to like this and then wrap it and there's obviously it's uh, winter time, hence the, the Christmas uh, setup, recreation thing. So I don't care, I can't rely on, on sun. So I um, uh, think I'll rely on some heat and put it near the radiator. Yeah. And I'm gonna um, scrub this around a bit 
and massage it <laughs> so it gets everywhere and there, were, there are no bubbles left and stuff. So let's see how this turns out, I guess. So to replace this uh, broken off switch, I got another similar one. It's a bit, it's a bit bigger, I guess, but um, yeah, it should work just the same. So I am going to solder the parts in here. I'll mark this because it's the top one. Um, I'm going to solder the cables onto this one and use this one as a replacement for this one that's broken off. Because this is pretty similar. It used to have um, this plastic uh, thing all here, the, the cap. Mm. Just gonna cut it off. So I hope this still is the topmost cable. Otherwise we have to turn the switch around, which is not that much of a problem. So yeah, this uh, seems reasonable. Let's try if uh, the whole switching thing works still. Or if it works again. It didn't work. <laughs> This is how it goes in there. Okay, it looks uh, pretty promising. I hope I got it in there correctly. So I'm um, gonna have to use a Commodore 64 that has the Dolphin DOS ROM in it. Let's see. This here. This should be Dolphin DOS here. So let's see how it fares. Yeah, that's pretty promising. Let's see. Okay, it still reacts. Let's see if the, the fast load works. Wow, let's... It's pretty convincing, I'd say. Okay, so this works. Um, this portion of the switch th switching worked before, so let's see if the um, normal ROM also works. And flick the switch, which should give us the normal um, 1541 ROM. So let's switch this to the normal Commodore 64 ROM. Okay. So this seems to be working again, which is cool. Let's do some more uh, refurbishing and see if this is... Um... Okay, let's, let's try and load something to, to see if this uh, really works. It seems to function pretty normally, which is great, of course. So it may just have been a loose contact somewhere or dirty contact on the... Um, original ROM or something like that. We cleaned the sockets and stuff. Working as it's supposed to be in both. Uh, it's a switchable. The ROMs are switchable from the normal ROM to the Dolphinus ROM, which is great. So I removed the circuit board again and I'm gonna give the, the whole mechanism a bit of lubrication. Uh, it isn't very loud or anything, but um, I guess it, it doesn't hurt. And first of all, you have to. There are these rails where the read write head um, travels on. I'm cleaning it with uh, some isopropanol. And then I'm gonna use some silicon fat to lubricate it. I'm applying just a little bit of. Uh, this is a, a paste, rather. This. That's a bit much already, but I'm just applying this there. And um, later we we'll run a test that uh, moves the head back and forth. So 
this can nicely spread all over the rails there. So then what I'm gonna do is to clean the head, which is under this black thing here. Okay, so there, the little white square looking thing with the uh, black stripe in the middle, that's the read right head. And uh, you can go in there with the Q-tip, cotton swab, and some isopropanol and wipe it gently and then use the other side and wipe it clean to make sure there isn't any residue on there. Um, and on top of this you will break the spring if you put it uh, put too much pressure on this thing. This is um, the one that presses the disc to the read write head. There's a little sponge on there and that uh, usually um, soak a cotton swab and put it in there for some time to um, also get rid of some grime from the sponge and then I wipe it a bit and use another one and so on and then to get it perfectly clean there that's what I'm gonna do so I'll put it in there without even moving this and I'm just leaving it like that for a bit so the little sponge can soak in some of it. Then I'm going around here. And this is pretty clean. I cleaned this. I think I cleaned the head before. So it's really not really necessary in this case. So um, I'm also going to lubricate this because I had um, this become pretty noisy on another drive um, I made a video about. And I have some, some lithium grease now that I'm going to try on this. So I'm going to put a dab of lithium grease on there. Which is uh, this stuff here. WD-40, specialist lithium, whatever. Spray fat. So let's see. So just a little drop there. And let it soak in. And then <coughs> we're going to wipe off the excess here so that's probably enough so I'm going to run some tests of my diagnostics cartridge which has um, a 1541 diagnostics that you can get at World of Yanni that I'm gonna link in below you can burn that to an EEPROM and make your own cartridge um, pretty handy stuff to check 1541 drives or other drives that is so I am going to do an alignment check with the drive, with the disk I inserted that I know um, was written on a 1541 that is uh, all right. Okay, so there was our knock. And as you can see, it works just fine. And the alignment is pretty, pretty good, actually. So that's pretty nice and it's pretty silent. Cool. So what else can we do? Performance test. Okay, here goes the performance test. Let's see what it does. And it formats the disk, as I said. Okay, so it passed the performance test, which is nice. Okay, I had this um, sitting here next to the radiator for some days, uh, hoping that the retrobriting process works if you keep it warm, even without UV light, or with a little bit from the window, but uh, it's winter here anyway, so let's see how this turned out. I think I'm gonna wash it uh, in the bathroom. So give me a second, be right back. Okay, so here's how this actually turned out. I think this is the side we retrobrighted. And this is the other side. They look pretty similar. Don't know if you can see it on camera. This is still a bit brown. So the retrobrighting process uh, definitely takes more time without UV light, but it still um, did something, clearly. So let's see if this, how 
this matches the uppercase. Yeah, look at that. It's a bit better, but it's still uh, quite brown. So I think I'll just repeat this um, when there's more sun. <laughs> Or get a UV lamp at some point or something like that. But um, at the moment, I'm, it's it's pretty clean. It doesn't look that bad. So I'm just gonna go with it because uh, I don't have time, and especially I don't have much sunny time uh, probably before Christmas. So let's put this whole thing back together. Okay, so got it all halfway assembled, switched to normal. Uh, let's see. Yeah, this looks promising. Yay, and it loaded bullet ash, no problem. Yeah, I think this is a success. And the drive is in quite a nice state now. It uh, looks way better than before and nearly as good as when I got it. Maybe even better because the switch looks better than uh, the blue one, actually. Um, yeah, this turned out pretty nicely. If you want to see more of this stuff, uh, Stay tuned, uh, there's going to be more refurbishing work to ultimately um, recreate my 1987 Commodore 64 setup. Uh, one thing that's missing in particular at the moment is the monitor. We will see what I can do. Don't want to spoil it now, but it's going to be nice, I think. Maybe there's going to be sparks. Yeah, so much for, for now. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. See you all next time, hopefully, with the next part of the Commodore 64 uh, 1987 setup recreation. Thanks. I'm Enmeta. See you next time. Bye. <laughs> I might actually have lubricated this too much. It doesn't make any authentic uh, sounds anymore. <laughs>